Hello, my name is Taylor Harris, and I just wanted to share my technique for doing an initial block out and framing of a composition when I'm trying to mimic original concept art. So in this case, I have this painting by Natalia Chroma, and this is my 3D version of it. This is still a work in progress, but for what we're going to go over, this will easily show the initial stages. So my goal here is I want to copy this composition as closely as possible. So in 3D Studio Max, I'm going to be using a tool called Perspective Match. I don't know what it's called in Blender or Maya, but I assume something similar exists. So what I will do first is I'm going to set the background image to my concept art. All right, and then I'm going to set the resolution of my render output to the same dimensions as my concept art. So that should do it. And then um, what I am going to do is just, since this is a, the primary shape here is this kind of box-like brick structure here, I'm just going to rough in something that's, approximately that size. I'm not really concerned about scale or actual dimensions. Like maybe this is 10 times too big or 10 times too small. All I really need is something roughly proportionate to that. And that'll do for now. So then over here, I'll go into perspective view and I will try to roughly get this in the same position as my concept art. That's close enough for what I need. Uh, and then I will go to create camera, create standard camera from view. Now we're in the view of that camera. You can see it here. To use the perspective match tool, I believe it doesn't work with target cameras. So we're going to change that to free camera. And then I'll go to the utility tab here. I have the perspective match tool docked in this button, but you'll probably have to find it in this more category and be listed in here. So we'll hit perspective match and then go to the viewport of your camera. And I'm going to do pick anchor object and we'll just choose our, our cube here. And then uh, back into the camera viewport, choose show vanishing lines. You'll see it gives us these different axes for uh, the different axes in the image. And so we'll just kind of line those up with whatever perspective lines we can find. So this technique is more for like architectural uh, images that have straight lines that you can follow, not really natural landscapes or architecture that lacks straight lines. And I know from experience from working on this particular project that the perspective in this image is not perfect. It was, uh, it seems to have been kind of freehanded. So our results here are not going to perfectly match but it should get us pretty darn close. It's this one. Okay, so I roughly got things in place. I'll probably need to do some adjustments, but now um, I'm going to be looking at the wireframe of this cube, and then I'm going to use my middle mouse click to kind of pan the camera around. I'm not changing the angle or focal length by doing this. I'm just moving the position of it, and I'm kind of focused on this frontmost corner um, on the bottom is kind of the point I'm aligning to. And then you have these controls over here as well for um, you can move the camera horizontally, vertically, or the distance. So since our cube is larger than this, I'm going to kind of zoom out with the distance here. Get that a little bit closer. And again, I freehanded this cube, so it's not going to match up perfectly. But from what I can do right here, is let's just convert this to poly. I can start kind of shaping this to my concept. So I 
And the part where perspective kind of breaks the most in this image is the kind of vertical lines, but we'll just do the best we can here. And again, I don't know what the scale of this is. So after I kind of get the block out, I would have to decide like how many meters this is and scale this up. But for now, I'm not concerned with that. Oops. You can see how looking at the concept art, the camera aligned in this way allows you to really quickly kind of match things up. Um, in this process, I would actually take a lot more time to be precise and get everything looking nice, but, um, just for demonstration purposes, this is a quick way to do it. Whoops. Didn't actually mean to remove that face. There we go. So now I'm getting in the ballpark as close as I'm going to get with um, not perfect perspective in this image. So you would work on this for a while. This should help you get your proportions pretty close. This is the basic setup. And then I'm going to show you what I do in Unreal. Probably at this point, I would save this out as an FBX. I'm going to take you to my current project, which is further along. So I've got it in here. And what I have done is I have my camera here. This is in the exact same position, orientation, and focal length as it is in Max. So that camera view should line up. Uh, and then what I've done is I've made a little plane here. And I just aligned it to the camera. And then I'm going to make a second viewport here so I can kind of show you in two views at once. So this one I will set to the camera view. I've made this material that has the concept art in it, and it just has a mask that kind of pans across it. So um, with that camera, or sorry, with the plane aligned to the camera, all I had to do was say I've locked it. Let me see here. I can remember how to unlock. Do I even have the right plane selected? Oh, it still doesn't want to. Maybe it's because it's a child of the camera. Oh, there we go. So you can see here, I can move it back and forth. So I just kind of did this until it completely filled the frame as close as possible. And then um, if I ever want to move any assets within the scene, um, the nice thing is when you have it selected, that yellow outline will show through even when it's the concept art. And then lastly, for this plane, we don't want it to actually appear in any render or anything. So I select that plane and I go into my details and type game and just want to check the box actor hidden in game. And that way, when I'm in this viewport, I can hit G to turn off game mode view and that'll hide the image and I can just see what the render will look like. So that is my basic setup for when I'm working on this type of architectural scene. It really helps me um, get something that's very close to the composition of the original work. So I hope that is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and good luck with your art.